carried on the most massive military build-up the world has ever seen. The system that is hostile to everything we believe in as Americans. They must use it to test new strategies fit for the nuclear age. But our purpose in having military strength is entirely defensive to defend our way of life. Cold War gone hot. What's up, everybody? Direct back at it again with another video. I know I'm a bit late on this, but I really wanted to cover 83 because it's a game that touches on a concept that not a lot of other games cover, or at least not that I've seen. I think the last time I saw a game touch on this concept was back in, uh, oof, Black Ops 1. The numbers, Mason! What do they mean? That's right, ladies and gentlemen. 83 is based in the Cold War. It was at a time when the US and the USSR were at each other's throats in an arms race to see who comes out on top. It was at a time when the world almost stood still, where every day people lived in fear that one day war could erupt. Both sides created their own organizations to combat each other. NATO, the North Atlantic Treaty Organization. It was a multi-government military organization founded in 1949, committed to preserving the ideology of the capitalist West and to stop all the spread of the communist toxicity. Warsaw Pact, previously known as the Treaty of Friendship. It was a cooperation and mutual assistance that consisted of the Soviet Union and seven other satellite states founded during the Cold War to oppose the globalist agenda of their capitalist enemies to ensure that the glorious Marxist ideals of the USSR are upheld. Now let's get into specifics. From the developers of the Rising Storm series and the Killing Floor series under the name Antimatter comes 83, a first-person tactical shooter that pits two large platoons of 40 players against each other in massive maps, fighting over a number of objectives that have tangible impacts on the battle as a whole when held by a victorious faction. Players will have access to a selection of real-world infantry weapons and equipment, as well as a selection of powerful land and air vehicles, which can decisively turn the tide of battle. The weapons are authentic to their real-world counterparts, all weapons work as players would expect in the real world, with systems such as ballistic modeling, penetration, real-world accurate recoil, and advanced weapon handling putting the most iconic weapons of the Cold War in the player's hands. Now, as far as I've seen, there's only the AK-47 for the Russians and the L1A1 SLR for the British, which I believe is also known as the F and Foul, but I could be wrong about that. There has also been sightings of the RPK, but I'm not sure if that's been confirmed or not. So that was the British and Russian faction weapons. There's also something called Pers Persistent warfare, meaning controlling territory and objectives has an impact on every fight. Rather than just being a required stepping stone to victory, as the battle rages across the world, every win, every loss, every supply line disrupted or silo destroyed helps turn the tide of Cold War. I don't know why, but this kind of reminds me of Battlefield 1's, um, it's slipping my mind, but I, I think I... Not sure what that mode was. It kind of sounds like that, but maybe I'm just going crazy. Using big data analysis and analytics to continue the narrative of 83, it will be shaped by the actions of the individual player, affecting content developed post-launch. In addition to this, individual acts of valor will be rewarded, with players being recognized for these world-shaping actions. They're going to talk more about this in the following months. But yeah, there's something interesting about this. It really reminds me of World War III, like especially that one cutscene. It like almost looks like a carbon copy of that specific part from World War III, which I find very interesting. 
And that's all I pretty much have for you guys today. I really can't wait to play this game. I just really wanted to make a video about this game, but I never really had the time to do any research of my own. But a subscriber of mine sent me a sheet with all the relevant information, so I really want to thank him. Thank you, Hyena, for sending me this little sheet, because I've just been so goddamn busy, I couldn't, you know, research it. So thanks, my man. I want to thank everybody for coming out to watch, and I guess I'll catch you in the next one. Bye bye